Coming up next on Unscripted Faith, is your life full of purpose and passion? Or do you currently find yourself stuck in the mundane of daily routines? We have Karen Eamon of Proverbs 31 Ministries joining us to discuss what it means to live fully with confidence and joy. And have you ever felt overwhelmed by all your surrounding circumstances? So overwhelmed that you wanted to pray, but the words just wouldn't come out. We're gonna spark up a conversation with Burning Messengers host, Tammy Sutherland about the power behind wordless prayer. All this and more coming up right now on Unscripted Faith. Unscripted Faith. We are so excited to have you join us today. And I have no doubt today's conversations are going to be full of impact. It is. It is wordless prayers, which I always like yes. that past scripture in Romans chapter 8, yes. you know, with groanings that can't be uttered, finding yes. joy in desperate times. Yes. Let's get in on this. Yeah, I think we should. You know, it can be easy for us to get distracted by the busyness of life and forget to give our time to God. We're joined now by Karen Eamon of Proverbs 31 Ministries. And Karen, is something you have ever, have you ever, ever struggled with balancing busyness and, and being still before God? Oh yeah, daily, daily. It's constantly a struggle when you have both things in your life, you have people and you have projects, you know, you have responsibilities and relationships, and then you have the most important relationship, which is God and keeping it all in balance and knowing when to devote time to the different things can be quite a struggle. It is. It's a constant struggle. It is. And how do you how do you balance your priority structure? You know, one of the things I think is really difficult a lot of times is you don't get distracted if something isn't important but importance doesn't necessarily necessarily define priority. What's your priority structure? Well, you know, I had someone once say to me, if I were to watch you for the next two or three weeks and observe how you spent your time, would it line up with what you say your priorities are? And I think that can be a pretty sobering question. You know, often we say our priorities are God and then maybe our spouse, if we have one family job on and on. But sometimes the reality of not only how we spend our time, but where we place our focus and our energy can be completely the opposite. So I think starting with that question is, is a good one to make sure you are being intentional to spend your time and your effort and your focus on the things that you say really matter in life. Karen, you're very passionate about living a life that you love. And um, I know that I am. I love life and I love having fun. But life isn't always fun. So can you share with us a little bit of how you kind of found love and joy in the midst of suffering? Yeah, I actually have been through a period in the last just over four years where I've lost 11 family members, either in my family or my husband's family, our immediate family, all four parents, cousins, aunts, uncles, you name it. And even though if you were to look on paper at my circumstances and think, wow, you know, her circumstances probably really have her down and she probably doesn't have any happiness or joy in her life. I really found that wailing and worship can hold hands and that in the midst of deep sorrow, we can find joy, not not circumstantial happiness, but joy that's based on the Lord and and based on what he's doing in us through these times when maybe we're not grieving family members, but we're grieving the loss of a job or an engagement or whatever it is. During those dark times of lament, we can actually dig deep and hold on to Jesus with everything we have and come out on the other side, really loving our life because of what he's doing through our circumstances. And what did you find? How did you find that? You said wailing and worship. I think that's a very, very profound statement. How do you do that? How did you do that in the struggle that you were walking through? Well, I think first um, to drop the plastic smile and drop all the Sunday school answers of <laughs> what we should be feeling like when we go through sorrow and just, just get really honest with God. I remember going out to the back of our property where we have some woods and a fire pit and sitting in a lawn chair and just crying out to God and saying, you know, this stinks. <laughs> My circumstances are not bringing me joy. And I don't know what you're doing, but I do know you're God and you do know what you're doing. I just can't 
quite see the purpose in it all and just be really honest and, and cry out to God and ask him what he wants you to, to learn. And then also, I think the second thing that was the most crucial to me is I began to develop an empathy for people going through hard times. You know, before when people would lose someone, I would think, oh, I'll, you know, pop over a casserole and send them a card and that's good. But I really found a deep empathy to really reach out to people even years later that had experienced grief and it helped me be a more compassionate person. Do you find that it's difficult to kind of stay rooted in scripture when you're going through hard times like you have? I think it is very hard to stay rooted if you're going on your emotions and just what you feel like doing at the time. And a lot of times we don't feel like connecting with God because of our circumstances and, and what's happened in our life. But I think if we can put in place practices of being consistent and not just, you know, flipping open our Bible and reading a passage, but really digging deep and studying God's word and memorizing it, putting it in our heart and then reciting it at those times that we don't feel joyful. It just has some kind of power to realign our thinking and to refresh our perspective and help us to see him in the midst of what we're going through. You know, one of the things I want to digress for a minute there. You talk about being real. I think in this generation, this day and hour, people, we, don't, we, we have to say that many times. You have to be real with God because somewhere we have felt like I have to be fake. What <laughs> is it about being real with God that's so hard for us? What do you find that the difficulty is uh, just being real with God about what we're really experiencing? Maybe in our situation, maybe it's our anger about him. Is it okay to be real in those moments? Yeah, I've learned God can handle our big emotions and we don't need to have everything all tied up in a neat bow that we can post about on social media of, you know, how we had this hard thing happen, but God met us and isn't life grand. You know, it doesn't always go that way. God can handle our big emotions. We can be truthful with him. He knows what we're going through anyway. And I think it's really important too to have somebody in your life with, you know, yeah. flesh and blood and skin yeah. on who can be sort of a sounding board for you as you process what you're going through and can help keep you accountable, help point you back to scripture and back to the Lord at those times you feel like straying. So not only being really upfront and honest and real with God, but also finding a person who you can be authentic with it as well, I think is just so crucial. Authenticity is so important, especially with the Lord and, and to be really uh, worshiping him. But let me ask, whenever you went through this difficult time or this season, what were kind of like your three things that you said, okay, I've, I've got to do this right now. I, I have to X, Y, and Z in order to get through this difficulty. Because I know for myself, when I experience pain, I tend to go inward and isolate. So what, do, what did you do? Well, I think, first of all, to not put my Bible on the shelf, it was really easy to say, you know, I've been a Christian for decades. I've read it all. I know it all. I'm just kind of really not going to spend a lot of time reading my Bible right now because I'm struggling and it's, it's not helping me. That's not true. We need to stay in our Bible. We need to engage when we feel like withdrawing. And by that, I mean with relationships. I know during all of this grief I was going through with losing all these family members, I just didn't want to be around anybody. Yeah. If a bunch of girlfriends were going out for coffee, I could make an excuse so quickly as to why I couldn't go because I was afraid that I would get triggered. You know, grief comes in waves and it comes out of nowhere and I can be completely fine on my mom's birthday. But then on a random Tuesday afternoon in the grocery store, a woman can walk by wearing her perfume and I lose it. So I was a little afraid of kind of not controlling my emotions. So I withdrew from people. And then I think too, to just really think back to the times in your life when God has been faithful, especially if you've kept journals of that or whatever, but to remember those times where you felt like there was no tomorrow and there was no hope, but yet God met you and to just rehearse his faithfulness in your mind over and over again. You know, Karen, as we're talking, I remember when I lost my mother, uh, I remember how hard it was on me and I was so angry with God. I've shared this before, but you know, as you're talking, I remember I had never lost anybody until I was 30 years old and the person who I lost was my mother. And, and I remember at that time, I didn't want anybody around me. A lot of that was because of fear, uh, not understanding. Uh, but did you notice like once you opened up to people or when you opened up to people, the blessing of the consolation, the wisdom that came from people? Because uh, that's what I sense. And I don't know if you kind of felt the same way about that. Yeah, when you, you mentioned 
different emotions. I know that grief can wear different masks, you know, yeah. it can be fear, it can be anger, you know, whatever. And I used to be so afraid that people wouldn't understand me. But when I opened up to them and said, you know, I'm going through grief, but it's bringing about anger or fear, or depression, or, you know, scatterbrainedness, all these different things, they they understood. And they said, we, we get it. We get it that you're not on the top of your game. We get it that this is the first time you've ever lost a parent and you don't know you know, how to act, but we're here for you. And I, I think being upfront and honest with those people and knowing that they're going to still love you is, is going to really help you move forward. Well, Karen, thank you so much for being with us today on Unscripted Faith. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thanks so much, guys. It's now time to head over to Anna and find out what's happening on this week's Trending Now. For all you Chick-fil-A lovers out there, here's some good news for you. America's favorite chicken sandwich is about to become an international export. If you're headed to London, Liverpool, Leeds, or Belfast, you'll still be able to enjoy your favorite chicken sandwich. And if you're staying in the U.S., Chick-fil-A announced it will be adding more than 3,000 restaurant locations across the U.S. and Puerto Rico. And in other news, in Las Vegas, there is much celebrating happening after 110 women in the Las Vegas Correctional Center gave their lives to Christ and got baptized. The gospel message was shared with the women and many said they had an indescribable encounter with the Holy Spirit. It is being described as the best day in prison ever. God is on the move. Keep looking up, no doubt he's moving in your life today. I'm Anna Schmidt and this is Trending Now. God truly is on the move. Correctional Center prisoners being baptized. Let's go. And Chick-fil-A. I ain't feeling Chick-fil-A. So that's what I'm saying. You can talk cannot. to that. You don't it's like right. Chick-fil-A? It's all right. I like Popeye's chicken. So. Uh, well, I, I, I won't I disagree. Think. I do like Popeye's too, but I like Chick-fil-A. But it's awesome to see what's happening in the women's prison. Uh, 110 yes. women getting baptized. Outstanding. Yes. Outstanding. Jesus. Outstanding. Giving captives freedom. Well, speaking of women, we yes. got some powerhouse <laughs> women that are in the house. And our next guest, the Lord spoke to her in the middle of the night. And the word that he shared with her was the word unspoken. Tammy, please, thank you so much for joining us here on Unscripted Faith. Thank you for having me. Let me say this too. Love the background. Yes, I mean, we get a lot of people so in here, good. but I was like, how do I get one of who's your decorator? <laughs> Man. Thank you, thank you. It's I mean, outstanding. It's it, this. This is a cross between my daughter's um, room and my studio. So there you go. Yeah. So very she cool. did. She designed it. She made it look good. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, listen. Let's get right in on your story here. Um, you know, but unspoken prayers and unspoken words. I love that scripture in Romans 8, where it talks about how many times we have groanings uh, that can't be uttered into words, but the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us. Tell us about what happened in your life at that time when this revelation came forward for you. You know, it's been uh, over 20 years when since I've really encountered the Lord in this place of intercession and prayer. Um, and just being being like baptized in the Holy Spirit, being a part of the prayer movement, uh, personally experiencing these groanings, these tears, travails, this intercession on the other side of words. Um, in about 2018, uh, a series of encounters began for me where the Lord would begin to unpack how this unspoken language of prayer actually forms within us, not just the prayer language, not just intercession, but begins to create us into a messenger that would embody intercession or begin to be the message of Christ, not just that we preach it, not just that we pray it, but we would actually be that message. And it, it really culminated with an encounter where he spoke to me the word unspoken audibly. I've only heard the audible voice of the Lord a few times in my life. And I knew that he was going to begin to give me language to help others understand what is taking place in this unspoken place of groaning, travailing, tear-filled prayer. So what is unspoken prayer? You know, it's it's interesting. A lot of times, Romans 8, we believe mostly that that's either prayer in tongues or it's just, just being able to lean into the Spirit and uh, pray what is the will of God. 
but then the language of heaven, it's not English. It's not Spanish. It's not our language. It's actually a language on what I say on the other side of words, because God is language. And if we can look at how the Lord encounters Elijah in that time of frustration where he's hiding from Jezebel in the cave and there's a wind, whirlwind, there's a fire, there's an earthquake. And it says that God wasn't in the wind, he wasn't in the fire, and he wasn't in the earthquake, but he was in the still, small voice. So that unspoken place, it's not a place without words. It's a place on the other side of words. It's the language of heaven, the communication of God. And it oftentimes is a spirit to spirit reality where we begin to know there's a knowing there where he breaks in through the noise, where he breaks in through the chaos and he begins to speak to our spirit. And out of that place, we begin to learn how to pray like Jesus taught us to pray for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven because we begin to communicate or encounter or um, connect with God in his counsel in the heavenly place. You know, Tim, I've seen that several times in my own life where God will literally, like you said, break into a circumstance. We've seen it in our church services where all of a sudden worship will come down and you sense this weight that comes yeah. on you. And you have to stay in that place. I think one of the lost arts is that the church no longer knows how to travail. Yeah. They don't know how to get underneath the weight of that and learn how to birth that out. What have you seen in your life when you get under that? What comes on the, you said, you talk about the words on the other side. What happens on the other side of those unspoken words? I'm telling you, when you get in that place, the weighty presence of God, there, there really are no words. And I think that's what we've got to understand. You said something very specific, the weight of the presence of God. And he begins to teach us how to wait on the weight yeah, of his good. glory and not to be so quick to speak, but be even more quick to listen. And so our body responds to that. Tears begin to be released. There can be tears of joy. There yep. can be tears of awestruck wonder. There can be tears of frustration. But it's this invitation of the Lord to come into a deeper place of an encounter mm. with him, intimacy with him, and an, even an understanding of what he's doing. And out of that, I believe even the interpretation, the language, God will begin to give us language to the unspoken. If we'll just wait on him and not rush past that moment, yep. but lean into it. Have you seen the fervent, effectual prayer um, really changing things on this side of heaven? Absolutely. 100%. Um, I can tell you so many stories, but it's true. The word of God is true. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. It really does accomplish so much. One, I'll give you the, one of the biggest examples. I've written about it, but I lived it, and my daughter in 2021 um, was dying of septic shock. She had heart failure, kidney failure, and liver failure. And the Lord had taught us to pray, taught us how to sit with him, Ephesians 2, 6, in the heavenly place, to be still in our soul, to listen, but also to call forth intercession in those that we knew would be praying. And in 2021, our daughter was you know, basically we were told to, to give up hope that she would die. And we watched God break in. And I fully believe because of faith, um, standing firm with him, intercession, reverent prayer, contending prayer, God raised her up. She's fully healed. She got a new kid, new kidneys, new lungs, uh, a new liver. I say new lungs because she had asthma before and she doesn't have asthma anymore. Um, and her heart was completely healed. We got our daughter back. And I think part of that, yes, the sovereignty of God, but a lot of it is because we just stepped into a realm of prayer where we said, God, you've got a promise and we're going to believe you and we're going to fervently ask you for it and we're going to call it forth and he moves. You know, Tammy, can we put that on? Can we just step into that? Because you mentioned, you know, we just go in to pray. Or is that something that, because I keep hearing you say the spirit breaks into us. He breaks mm -hmm. through in that moment. Is there a way that we can put that on or does the Holy Spirit have to gird us up to be able to do that? I mean, yeah, it's, it's both and. I believe it's both and because our life with Christ is a journey. 
And that's one of the things I want people to understand is that this is a journey. We are invited into by the, the leading of the spirit into salvation. It says that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and righteousness and judgment or convicts us to repent, right? And so we can't do anything without him. But when we ask, he doesn't give us a stone. We ask for his gifts. He doesn't give us a stone. He doesn't give us a serpent. He gives us good gifts, which is his spirit. And so one, yes, we, we put on Christ. We robe, we begin to take on the robes of righteousness. We ask him and believe him. We enter into that place. But at the same time, he meets us there. It's something that he does by his grace through our faith, the same way as salvation. We believe and we step into the place of prayer. And I tell people often, if pray that pray this way. If I don't want it, make me want it. If I don't want the power of your spirit, make me want more. I want to ask you for more. I want to ask you for all of you. Baptize me in your spirit with fire. I need to step into the place of intercession. I believe this is what your word says. I'm seated with you. So Lord, bring revelation to me of where I'm seated. It says that the spirit prays when I don't know what to pray. He's the intercessor. So Lord, begin to intercede. It's that partnership with heaven that we step into and he always moves when we believe and we have faith in him. Well, you know, we got about a minute left, Tammy. I got one more thing. As you're talking, I'm thinking in my mind about ask and, and you, you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be open. But that ask, seek and knock means continually keep coming. Do you believe that scripture goes along with what you're talking about? Absolutely. I mean, and the, the interesting thing about that scripture is it's talking about the the unjust judge, right? He doesn't, he's not the 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 parable there is about a judge that's not just. And he's saying how much more when you ask and you seek and you knock where your father in heaven opened that door, right? Because he is a just judge. And so there is a a certain amount of contending that he draws us into, but it's not necessarily a begging, it's a belief. It's stepping in and saying, Lord, you said this and I believe it and I know that you're good and I know that you withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before you. And so it's a stretching of our faith. It's a drawing us closer and more near to him. It's a growing in our belief that he is who he says he is. Amen. The power of unspoken words. Thank you so much, Tammy, for your book and for what you're doing and your message. I believe it is definitely pertinent for this day and hour. Thank you for stopping by Unscripted Faith. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ask and keep on asking. Seek and you will find and knock and the door will be open. Stay tuned because when we come back, I've got a question for Pastor Angela that you're going to want to hear. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in his counsel and hear his wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness his word manifest in your life and return to his promises for you. Ask for a prophetic reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. This election night, with a country divided and America's future hanging in the balance, go to a place you can trust, CBN News. CBN News presents an election night special with live coverage. Get live updates on each of the campaigns, plus reliable analysis on the shifting balance of power. Watch the CBN News election night special. If you've been hanging out with us here on Unscripted Faith, we've had a couple of great conversations about people that are walking through difficult times, but also unspoken words when we pray, when we cry out to God and what it means. 
I've got a question for you. Yes. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where you saw what we've been talking about with our last two guests, difficult times and the yes. weight of God coming upon you and having to birth something out and seeing on the other side God do something supernatural? Oh yeah, I can remember very specifically, a um, couple years back I had a very personal attack and um, was actually like went out and someone was literally trying to harm me. And um, it had culminated in this moment and I was, I flew, I was flying out of state and praying. And in a matter of three days, the Lord completely turned the situation around and preserved my life. And it was, wow. it was really, really powerful. How about you? Uh, where do you want me to start? Yeah, I mean, right, oh my goodness. Right. I mean, I think, like I said earlier, it's a lost art in the body of Christ. Yeah. Agreed. People don't, we do it in worship services. Like we'll be in the middle of worship. The power of God will come down and we'll go into a prophetic song. 45 minutes later, yes. then God will begin to speak to us prophetically different things. Or we'll begin to see a week, a two weeks, three weeks down the line, things that will begin to manifest that previously weren't there. Because I think one of the unique things is that it says there where we don't know what to pray for. So if we knew we would use our words, but there are some things that God wants to do in and throughout our lives that we don't know about that as we begin to bear down, we know that something is coming. And as we begin to birth that out, great things will happen. I remember even with my son, uh, they said he was going to die. And uh, my wife was pregnant at the time. And the Lord spoke to me beforehand and said, your sons will be prophetic and that they would live. Wow. And uh, so she got pregnant, we went in there, there was no heartbeat and the HCG levels were going through the roof. And the doctor said to me, mm -hmm. he said, hey, listen, you're probably not going to have a baby. I said, the devil is a liar. Right then Come and there on. in the doctor's Come office, on. I told him, I said, no, excuse me, doctor, all due respect, God said now. He was so astounded by my faith. So I went home and I felt the weight hit me and I began to intercede and we began to pray and we began to just press in. And I was, I remember my wife was in the kitchen and I was walking back and forth, just pacing, saying in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of death. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, you said my son would be prophetic. He will live and he will not die. And I just began to declare and declare until it broke. Mm. And when it broke, I knew the next time we went in, he, the heartbeat would be there, he would be fine, everything was good. We went in, I remember sitting in the waiting room ready to go in to see the doctor. I looked at my office and said, I said, baby, we don't even need to go. I was like, listen, wow. I already know that heartbeat's going to be. As soon as they put that Doppler on her belly, that heartbeat took off at 167 beats a second. And uh, it was after a period though of travail and pressing through. I mean, that's the power of prayer. That's and right. I think that like, that is one of the biggest calls to the body in this hour is I agree. We've gotten away from prayer away and from it, it is literally our power line. It is it the is. very thing that changes the tide of all things. It dispels arguments. It brings down princes and principalities. We have got to remember that prayer is the answer. It is, without a doubt. And if we don't get in there and press in, yes. we'll miss miracles. She said something really good too. You have to wait for the weight, W-A-I-T, yes. for, for the W-E-I-G-H-T, -E which is so important as well. Yes, his glory, his power, Amen. his empowering. And I love too that Karen was explaining how when she went through her dark time, she went to prayer and the word and those people spurred her forward. That's right. You know, it's not just for something like that's abstract, like, oh God, help in this circumstance, but it's something that's very personal for me that in a moment I can find myself smack dab in the center of his presence. Amen, amen. So no matter what you're battling with, ladies and gentlemen, just understand that God is with you in the storm. Get underneath the weight of his glory yes. and press through and watch on the other side the miracle that will transform your life. We'll see you next time. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.